provide a brief roadmap for what we're going to be looking at. My part, I am going to present two additional arguments new in the round that we believe highlight the problems of the plan presented by the government team, and then move down the arguments they have presented in favor of their case. That being said, is everyone ready? <laughs> Despite the heckling, I'd like to thank you all for being here today. As my good colleague said, it is always more fun to debate in front of an audience. With that being said, though, I think there are two major problems that they are failing to account for in presenting this plan. These will consist of two disadvantages of the plan as presented. The first disadvantage deals specifically with the budget of the state of Indiana. Now, when we look to their plan, they are specifically saying that they are going to increase spending on Discovery Park threefold. They provide the estimate of $100 million currently being spent on that institution. But what does this mean for the context of the broader Indiana budget? What does it mean to triple this amount of funding? We can look to two specific areas in which cuts are likely to be made. The first is funding for secondary education, aka high schools. When we look to the discussion that is being had right now in the Indiana State Assembly, in addition to the discussion of cutting funding to institutions such as Purdue, there is also discussion of cutting funding for high schools. Ultimately, the only reason that Purdue is as successful as it is is because we have a talent base coming in from Indiana schools. If we undermine that talent base, we are fundamentally weakening Purdue. The second issue that they are failing to consider, though, vis-a-vis -vis the state budget, is the question of infrastructure. Right now, when we look around the United States today, and specifically in Indiana, we see a major problem. We are not spending enough on our infrastructure. Bridges, roads, electrical distribution, water treatment, all of it is uncovered. All of it is unprovided for. I'll take you in just a second. And ultimately, if we are devoting all this money to research and development, we will miss the need and the very serious problem of funding our infrastructure. Yes? So how much money is enough on infrastructure for the state of Indiana to spend? Uh, to provide perspective, it has been estimated by, um, I believe it is the U.S. Council on Civil Engineering, that we need to spend approximately $500 billion in the next 10 years on just bridges alone in the United States. Obviously not all of this is in Indiana, but this is sort of a perspective. Multiply that many times over for roads, for electrical infrastructure, for water treatment, for telecommunications, and you begin to see the scale of the problem. The state budget, in light of the rancorous political discussion over funding, will not be able to provide for these issues if we are funding Discovery Park to this amount. The second issue is academic freedom. Now, ultimately, this kind of grant program is likely to be competitive. That is to say, the professors must write grants and argue that their research is worth funding. This creates a number of problems. First, it hurts academic freedom because ultimately the funding is at the discretion of political officers. If there is a particular individual who has stock in a company that would be weakened by a new development, he may have an incentive to not fund a research project. Well, we cannot assert that this will always be the case. The ultimate issue is this presents a real risk to academic freedom. Moreover, given the politically rancorous nature of the debate, they're going to want to see results right away. Many forms of research will not pay dividends for 10 or 20 or 30 years. And yet, by putting the funding in the hands of politicians who want results now, we will risk losing access to the research and development that is so key to our success as an economy and as a country because they are focused only on short-term benefits. Yes? Don't professors have to write grants now? See, the issue is when we look to grant writing in the status quo, what we see is there's a mix of general funding from the university, from corporations, and from other sources, such as private donors. Ultimately, those private donors put, in general, few stipulations on funding. It is up to the university to decide where they go. They are not subject to these political considerations. Moreover, because the corporations see direct benefit in the forms of the intellectual property to the research that they help fund, they benefit in the long term. With that being said, though, we can turn to the actual case presented by the government team to look at some of the problems they present. Now, when we go to their plan, they give us this number of approximately $100 billion. And they say that right now this is funding about 40 startup companies. But when they make these broad assertions about the number of companies that it will provide aid for, the number of professors it will provide aid for, we have no way of knowing this is actually the case. When they make claims that it's going to produce research and development and new startups, they do not give the context and they do not warrant the argument that it will actually increase either of these. They provide no sense of whether current research and development is underfunded or, if anything, overfunded. 
Moreover, on the research and development specifically, by increasing the amount of grant writing, since it is ultimately a government contract and tends to have more stringent requirements than, say, private sector funding, you're substantially increasing the amount of time that professors must spend on this. Thus, we're going to see a major decline in the productivity of our professors. Finally, on their claimed advantage to the economy, yes, small businesses are important, but it's also important to remember that nearly 95% of small businesses fail within the first five years. Do we really want to gamble away our funding on people just guessing that a project will work? We don't know. <laughs> and ultimately, the only way to counter this would be even more grant writing and even more argument that delays the research and development process. Ultimately, my partner and I believe government funding in this form is not the best way to provide for research and development at Purdue, and thus we urge you to negate today's resolution.